You're listening to One Free Family, a new take on peaceful parenting, where you can hear ideas for helping to raise free, independent, and peaceful children. Visit OneFreeFamily.com to connect and listen. Here are your hosts, James and Taylor Davis. And we're back with another episode of One Free Family. This is James. And Taylor. And that's Taylor. And we are pumped to bring you another episode today. It's another nighttime recording, so we might be a little bit loopy here, but... I Not think me. It, no, you're, you're Never perfectly loopy. unlooped, but... I might be. I should speak for myself. You I should. might be a little bit loopy here. Nonetheless, we are pumped to bring you a follow-up episode today off of episode six of One Free Family, which was owning our... I think that's episode un- five. Yep. Episode five of One Free Family, <laughs> owning our unusual parenting choices. Uh, this actually comes from a thread we had in our Facebook group, Plug, uh, One Free One Family. One Free Family. It's actually been popping off recently. Love that group. I, can I say popping off? I guess. Am I cool enough to say that? Because it's been popping You just popping did. Up. And yeah, there's been a lot of discussion in there. And I actually started a thread specifically asking for pain points or ideas for future episodes. And I thought this one was a pretty cool follow-up. So it's a, a fairly long personal message I was sent, but, but I'll give you a couple lines from it. And then I'll give you the gist at the end. So the general gist is how do you handle situations when your unschooling family meets a family that engages in more mainstream parenting or mainstream education. And a few of the specific examples that she jumps into are uh, she was visiting someone who restricted screen time and the person was telling her children they weren't allowed to watch TV. So when they got together at the mother-in-law's house, they she was confused as to what to do because half the kids there had the screen time restriction mm-hmm. and her kids didn't have it. Another follow-up question she had was, what do we do when other families are punishing their children a lot in front of our kids yeah. and our kids maybe have questions about that or it just creates a generally uncomfortable situation because she doesn't engage in similar parenting decisions. And I think this actually comes up more than a lot of people realize, especially when you first imagine yourself going down, whether you call it peaceful parenting or helping your kids engage in self-directed learning, or you're just trying to become more intentional with how you interact with your kids, all of a sudden it becomes like so apparent to you how differently many people interact with their kids. And I know from talking to a lot of unschooling families in particular, this can be a source of discomfort, right? And it's why in many cases, unschoolers or peaceful parents tend to congregate with one another and pat each other on the back about how nice it is to be around parents (laughs) of a similar philosophy, but it's not always possible, right? So I think it's worth and, and sometimes you're going to want to maintain relationships with people yeah. who don't parent exactly the way you do. So I think it, it, it does make sense to have strategies for going into situations like that. Yeah. And this isn't the first time that this conversation has come up in our Facebook group either. So I think it's exciting to be able to address it a little bit now. The episode that James just mentioned, episode five, was all about owning our unusual parenting choices. And it was really, we talked a lot more about kind of how to respond to people who have questions about our parenting choices and things like that. And so today we really want to talk a little bit more about kind of like, how do we in our own families kind of handle situations that come up in which we are with people who are parenting in a more mainstream way or kind of witness more punitive measures being taken with children. How do we handle that ourselves? How do we explain that to our kids if we feel the need to and so on? Yeah. And I think it's, it's one of these situations where you can kind of do some math beforehand on because this is going to be a follow-up on owning your unusual parenting choices, right? Like there's going to be situations where conventional wisdom will tell you that like everyone sort of agrees on one sort of idea. So like one basic example might be like a pretty safe complaint you'll hear out there is what's with people letting their kids bring devices into restaurants and using them at the table Mm. or something. Right. And now who knows if that's something you do in your family or if you don't, we don't really eat out enough for that to be (laughs) something we have an official policy on. It's like both from a financial and a simple practical. Yeah. If we're taking our kids out to eat, they most likely really want to be going. And so they're not really. Yeah. Right. It's like usually to get together with friends or we're at a hotel somewhere or yeah. whatever. So that, that isn't one for us, but like it'll start to shine a light on what you're doing differently from others. And you kind of have to make the decision in that moment. Is this a time like where I want to stand up for this kind of unusual or less mainstream thing that we do? Or is this a time 
or is this issue particular issue not something I just feel like sticking my neck out for in this situation, right? Yeah, and I feel like this comes down to a couple of things. Like when you think about kind of being sharing space or sharing time with a family who might do things differently than you or multiple families who might do things differently than you, like if you're in a public place like a restaurant or a cafe or a coffee shop or something, I think it kind of comes down to like part of the whole process does really go back to kind of owning our own unusual choices. And if, and if you're continuing to do the work to get comfortable with the choices that you're making, I I mean, of course we're always questioning because questioning does lead us to making better choices. But if you've questioned and questioned and thought and thought, and you're intentionally choosing something, the more comfortable that you get with that, the less hard this is going to feel when it comes to maybe feeling judgment from others about things like that. I actually read a blog post, I mean, years ago, actually, um, you, James, you bringing this up made me think of this. You're welcome. You're all, oh yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it was actually about kids bringing devices into restaurants, which like, oh. isn't really a pet issue of mine because again, it's not something we, we personally deal with very much. And act, but anyway, this, this mom of two kids was talking about how she sometimes felt judged for letting her kids use devices in coffee shops. And she went on to write this blog post about how like her and her husband really love coffee shops mm. and their kids were young enough that they couldn't stay home alone when they wanted to go to coffee shops together. And they didn't really have anybody to watch the kids or the kids weren't comfortable with that. So like as a family, they came to this mutual agreement that sometimes they would go to coffee shops as a family. The mother and her husband would have this like awesome time to just have a conversation and enjoy coffee together. And the kids would get something to eat and they'd have their devices and they were perfectly happy too. And she just went on to say like, this was like, a mutually enjoyable experience for everybody in our family. And we all have really fond memories of these times that we spend together at coffee shops. And for me, that kind of just like, like it like switched on the light bulb. I was like, Oh, right. All of these like conventional wisdom that we carry deserves a second look. Like this family just like found a way to do something to spend a few hours every couple of weeks that made them all feel really happy and filled up and awesome. Right. Because conventional wisdom would tell you that Better alternatives would be simply staying home and let you, letting your kids use devices there. Okay. Or but, even more conventional would be <laughs> bring your kids to the coffee shop and require them to be perfectly behaved while you had your adult conversation. Exactly. They can stack the salt and pepper shaker or right. draw on the napkins or whatever, yeah. but they can't, they, right. They have to sit there and abide your conversation and make space for you even though they didn't pick going to the restaurant. Right. It wasn't like their that. choice. And the most hilarious part about that whole thing, when I think about that story, I'm like, when I go to a coffee shop and I look around, like most people are on their devices anyway. Oh God, right. No. So, and, and I have no judgment Many towards people those people about go that. To a coffee shop to use their device, exactly. like okay, their laptop, yeah. you know, whether they're doing work. And some of those people, by the way, are just looking at Facebook. I've seen it with my own two eyes. So. Oh, I saw somebody <laughs> watching like a Twitch stream at a coffee shop. Yeah, and awesome. my son was like, why is that girl watching Twitch? I'm like, she's watching someone game. I don't know. Yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's actually two parts of this as you're talking about it that are kind of distinct in my mind. And it's almost like two different phases that you need to work through, or maybe that's not even the right way to think of it. But the two distinct areas in my mind are, first of all, worrying about being judged by others. And that I think is something that at least for me, hasn't been that difficult to work past over time. Like, (laughs) well, mostly (laughs) because I'm a weirdo, but also because I don't know, like when you're just kind of strange in general, if you don't work past that, you spend your whole life sitting around worrying and that's just not sustainable for me. So, yeah. so I was able to work past that. But actually one thing that I still experience discomfort about is when I think that my parenting choices will put people I love in uncomfortable situations, mm-hmm. you know? So even though I personally, like, especially say we're sitting around my house and I have no issue with my kids say playing video games as much as they want or playing say violent video games. That's another thing people have concern about Mm -hmm. video games where some of the characters hold guns, you know, but if I have a friend coming over, someone I really care about a lot who doesn't like that for whatever reason, or maybe their partner doesn't like it for some reason, I will experience discomfort on their behalf because I don't want to put them in a position where they have to explain to their kids. It's kind of strange because they ought to be able to explain to their kids and do so confidently and so on. But that still feels hard for me. And, Mm -hmm. and I think that's part of all this too, but I think getting in touch with yourself and figuring out which instinct you're most moved by is a great place to begin. Because if you're most moved by being judged by others, I think you can start that work right away. Go listening to the owning your own parenting decisions thing, get more intentional with your partner or whoever else uh, does parenting with you 
get more intentional online in communities uh, if you're not parenting with a partner and just try to figure out what you want to do and then stick with it. Uh, but I think this episode will help a lot with trying to work through that. Like, okay, these people are making different parenting choices than me. How do we proceed from here yeah. so that everyone leaves it feeling as good as possible, even if no one's going to feel perfect. So should we talk about the specific examples that came up in this, yeah, let's go. in this message maybe as a way to start? I think that's an excellent idea, Taylor. Although we've really already started, haven't we? We've been talking <laughs> for like 10 minutes or something. <laughs> I think that would be a great place to start now that we are literally 10 minutes in. That was good. I did not even see the timer. That was, that was pretty good. Okay. So actually, I think I have an example off the top of my head about the screen time thing, but I want to say first, you, you had a really good piece of insight into this. When I'm we were sure just, I did. Yeah, you did. When we were first <laughs> initially discussing this idea for show prep, and that was around with certain types of relationships trying to hang out with families in a way that kind of sets everyone up for success in terms yeah. of their own parenting choices. Do you want to jump into that for a second? Sure. Really okay. So one thing I was thinking about this is, you know, if you have a family that you really like spending time with, let's say, let's even say it's a relative of yours, right? Like it's your sister and her kids or your brother-in-law and his kids, um, or just a really close friend of yours. And you really value spending time with those people. Um, I think one thing that I've come to learn is a really good way to do that and have it just feel easier and happier for everybody is to find ways to spend time together that are going to kind of eliminate some of those mm. trigger points or some of those challenges. So like, for example, if you have a family that you really love spending time with, but let's say their kids, you know, aren't allowed to watch TV at all, then maybe most of the times that you spend together don't have them come to your house where you have your kids TV, right? I would suggest like make plans to meet out somewhere and do something out and about instead as much as you possibly can. Cause when you can kind of cut down on those tension points, everybody can just enjoy being together a little bit more and you don't have to worry so much about that. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, whenever you're thinking about making concessions like this, it's probably worth questioning in your own mind, like how often do we really want to spend time with this family? Right. And right. I think that's probably the beginning thing. So if you're sister's flying in from Hawaii and she's going to be out once a year, it probably isn't that big a burden on your family to just like go to the beach, go on instead. some more outings that week. So <laughs> you don't have to deal with that you, tension right? as so, like, much. You go into your local city or you go out into the country or you go, you just go out someplace. And, and I would say also, I, I think this is a good time to say, like, if you have people visiting, we have this with family too. And it, it's not just about watching TV. It could just be about anything. If you have people visiting and again, like James said, it's like, doesn't happen that often. So it's kind of worth it to carve out the time. Also, for the times that you're going to be home, a little bit of prep can go a long way, right? Like just thinking about things that will be mutually enjoyable for everybody to do will also cut down on tension of like, mm, how are we going to spend our time? Or yeah, we never saw your kids the whole time we were They visiting. were busy doing their stuff. And also yeah. I think finding mutually enjoyable things for everybody to do might also cut back on like just other conflicts that could arise. And, you know, the less conflict there is, the less you need to deal with different parenting choices, right? Because anytime there's conflict with kids, we need to deal with that as parents. So mm. um, just keeping every, you know, obviously we can't control everything, but but giving a good effort to just offer things that will, put, you know, hopefully help everybody be as happy as possible. So even if you're going to be around your home, you know, think about what everyone might like to do. Are, are all these kids coming over kind of artsy? Like maybe offer like, Oh, we have tie dye supplies. Let's all tie dye together. Or do they like to play games? Like one time we had family here for Christmas and I just bought a new board game that I thought everyone from kids to grown ups would like. And bug we bingo. all, yeah, it was bug bingo. It was, it was channel. legit. Bug bingo. Maybe we bug. can post a video bingo. of that. Oh yeah, we have that. <laughs> we That's do. Funny. Um, but that was like, obviously that didn't take up that much time, but it, it like created these little moments of mutual enjoyment and also these memories that my kids' relatives could hold on to of times spent with them. Um, again, we still didn't require our kids to come play, but it was just something that I knew from knowing them, they would think would be fun and they would come join us. Yeah, so it can be a building block too for further hanging out or, you know, like now that we're all together, then maybe something else spontaneous happens from there that catches everyone interest exactly. as well. Right. And uh, I think if you know your kids well, there probably are things you can present that would be exciting options that might attract them away from their normal routine. Not to say there's anything wrong with their normal routine, but if you but have again, a strong goal, I think to, if like, like, like you said, James, if it's like a situation where it's a relative coming and you see them once or twice a year, it's like worth it yeah. to try. And buy again, some water balloons, you know? yeah, water, exactly. <laughs> buy some water balloons. Um, again, like I think expectations are important to take a look at and to hold lightly because 
all of your efforts just may not pan out, right? Like your kids might just be having a bad day or a bad week and parenting the way that we parent. Um, if your kid is feeling that way, like you're not going to probably want to be coercing them into doing things they don't feel like doing. So we do our best. And then we also understand that sometimes, sometimes things don't work out in a way that we hope they do. And we try to, I always try to come back to supporting my kids where they are, as long as they're not hurting anybody else or upsetting anybody else by like, you know, getting in their space or touching their bodies or stuff like that. Yeah. And I think too, so say like an unconventional choice for many people would be, we're all going out for brunch and like one kid doesn't simply doesn't want to go is having a bad morning, doesn't want to go. And then the unconventional choice of course, is just to let the kid not go to stay home. Yeah. Like and, whether one parent stays behind or the kid's old enough to stay home alone. Right. And I think this is a key, a key moment where you can alleviate a lot of the tension in the relationship between you and everybody else by and actually your kid and everyone. Else. But I'm saying by actually just being confident in the decision, because mm. if you're wallowing and you're like apologetic and you're second guessing and you are, you seem totally shaken up by the situation that might make people feel confused. But if you're just like, yeah, as he's having a bad day, uh, he's really not interested in coming out to brunch. Like, I'm going to stay go home and have with fun. him. I'm going to stay home with him. Yeah, we know? do that a lot. We'll see you when you're back. You yeah. Know? I mean, when it comes up, it actually, yeah. I don't think it comes up that often. But... No, but I mean, we're, I think, I feel like over time we've become more open to that. Like yeah. not everybody's always going to want to do the same thing at the same time. And what we found is that our family, most of our family besides us has either parented their own kids, if their kids are grown now, or currently parents their kids in a more sort of mainstream fashion than we do, but everyone's fine with it. Right. Yeah. And, and they may, I mean, who knows? Sometimes I wonder like, what do they say when we're not around? Like, can you believe they didn't just like make Izzy come with us? Like, come on now, I'll be the parent. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if they say that. And sometimes I wonder, no, I but so. as time goes on, I also just think like, if they wonder, that's okay. They still love us. We still love them. They don't, if we're not totally on the same page, that's just okay. People are different and it still works. Yeah. And I think too, and this goes back to kind of having these conversations with the decision makers in your family and with your kids. Like I think over time you'll get a general grasp for what frequency your family is on and how that compares with other people in your life. Right. And so sometimes like, I think this happens most often with someone who's like, like if you and I were friends with another set of parents and Hey, we all have kids, maybe it's from a previous chapter in life or, mm -hmm. you know, it's people we meet through work or whatever else. And then you get all the kids together. I think like, Parents oftentimes have this really strong attachment to, I really hope this yeah. is perfect. You know, <laughs> like, totally. like we're getting together with my old friend from college right. and like, I hope this is the greatest time ever so we can go on vacations together or whatever the thing is. And I think if we set aside attachment yeah, from that totally. and say like, let's just see how it goes and we'll see how it feels. And once we're in the situation, I think that's when we can kind of make the decision. Like, is this a, cause I think if it is a relationship that you hope to have be strong and be more than like a once a year thing, that's when it's actually really, really important to stand as firmly to your parenting principles Good as point. possible. Because yeah. if you're going to see that, like say they moved in to the neighboring city, right? Yeah. If you're going to see them frequently, you don't want to constantly, like say you, you don't mind your kids using their iPads when they feel like it. You don't want to constantly be setting up these outings that your kids don't even really want to go to yeah. just to meet this need of like, Ooh, the other parents are going to be concerned about iPads. Like I think at that point it's okay. Just invite them over, have the iPads out. The kids use them or they don't parents ask the questions or they don't. And everyone just decides like, is this a good fit? Cause they might decide I've actually seen multiple times families change their approach to different things after hanging out with us, like slowly over time. Right. Like, and I think we can make that decision for ourselves too. Like, do we want to change something? But, but doing that math and understanding that just because someone parents their kids differently, or if they have restrictions that you don't, it doesn't mean you have to end the relationship with them. Like right. you can let them make that decision if they want to, <laughs> but don't, I don't, I don't, I think we do ourselves and our friends and family and, and everyone else a disservice when we artificially change ourselves and pretend to be someone we're not. Yeah, I think so too, because I think, well, I guess I'll first, I'll say, I think sometimes these relationships will just shake out the way they're meant to shake out over time, right? Yeah, like I if, so. if you're, if you're spending a lot of time with people and repeatedly, it just isn't feeling like a good fit or there's a lot of tension. Like, it seems like the natural order of things would be like, you'd probably reach out a little less yeah, and they'll notice too, by they'll the way. notice yeah. too. Right. And, and sometimes that's just okay. Sometimes it's just not a great fit. And 
it is what it is and we can kind of take it for what it's worth. Or if you and, you know, the adult in that family are still really close, then maybe you find a way to get together outside of bringing the kids and things like that. But yeah, I think it is important to kind of stand strong in what we, in what we kind of believe as parents, right? Because if we do all really like spending time together, you don't want to get stuck in a situation where you're just repeatedly having to kind of yeah, be somebody that you're not or ask your kids to be people that they are not. You want it to be comfortable. And I think I always go back to evaluating, like, is my kid disrespecting somebody else's body or property? And if they're not, then it's just okay for them to kind of do their thing. And it doesn't mean we don't sometimes have conversations about like, you know, how to take other people's interests into consideration and how to make connections and relationships and things like that. But ultimately we're really big on self-ownership and it's okay for people to kind of be self-directed and choose their own way to spend their time. Yeah, definitely. And actually I think this might lend itself to a specific example. So a while back we were visiting a friend of yours actually, and there was a situation where our kids and their kids kind of, well, there were some age differences and stuff like that, but ultimately they sort of had different ideas on how to spend their time. Right. And I will say that this family also parented their kids in a, in different ways than us in some ways. And one of the restrictions or one of the kind of norms in their home was this idea that using technology too much was a bad thing, right? Like that was definitely something that had been discussed in that family before. Now, at one point in the visit, one of the parents expressed to you, Hey, my son is concerned because your kids are like using their devices and he's hoping that they'll like play more. But then we sat and we reflected and we were like, okay, let's actually go through this because that's good feedback to hear. We don't want to like, if this kid is feeling left out or excluded, we didn't Mm -hmm. want that to be happening. But as we kind of thought about it, we were thinking about the situation in the house. There were a couple of factors that had created the situation, right? I mean, one of the first things was there were a lot of things around in this house, but there was some possessiveness on the kids that live there around sharing those items. Right. So there, you know, there was some initial tension based on that. And then from there, one of the, our kids actually invited that son to play. And the son was like, nah, he didn't want to play that game. Right. And so let's play a board game or a toy game. I don't know exactly what it was, but, and then at that point they, you know, our kids were like just in this house with like actually nothing to do (laughs) because they weren't, weren't sure about what items they could use. And the one explicit offer they had thrown out there wasn't received. And the son of this other person wasn't inviting our kids to do anything. So they used their iPads. And I I thought actually that was a pretty savvy way to, they found something to do. Right. Instead of like complain to us when we leave or can we go out? Like, why is this so boring here? Like, Mm -hmm. no, they just sorted it out on their own. And so I think made the decision together to just kind of sit with that being a little bit uncomfortable. (laughs) Right. It was like, yeah, a little bit uncomfortable, like too bad. It didn't shake out a little bit differently, but also we ultimately decided we were okay with our kids' choices and with our choice to support their choices. Yeah. And yeah, maybe it was slightly uncomfortable, but it didn't ruin the relationship all as well. Like it just, yeah. And actually fine. even that day, we wound up spending plenty of nice time together. It's just like, right. I think, and one of the things I believe very strongly too, is that I'm okay with other people's kids having conversations with their parents about why they parent differently than we do because any parent should have some reasons why they parent the reason they, the way (laughs) they should have reasons why they parent the way they do. And you ought to be able to explain them to your kids. And I don't really feel like it's my job to parent in a way that makes you have easier conversations with your kids. Yeah, exactly. To maybe not introduce a different way of parenting that your kids are going to wonder about and then right. Create this situation where you have to kind of answer questions. Exactly. I, I'm inviting all the people in my life to own their own parenting decisions yeah. too. And I think it's okay. Cause like, you know, whether it's things like devices or, you know, cause I've been in this position before too, right? Like my kid might say, how come these other neighboring kids, you know, their parents will buy them, I don't know, sugary cereals or something like that. Right. Like mm-hmm. for me and, and my money and what I, the food I bring into that, that's just not something I buy at the grocery store, like for whatever reason, unless it's just special. But you have to tell them the reason if they ask. Exactly. And I do have, and I do have a reason <laughs> I know you do. And I'm just okay with it. And if they feel like I'm the worst dad in the world and when they're 30, they want to buy all the tricks that they want. That's fine. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm fine with it. And I would be fine if our neighbors were eating their sugary cereal out on the patio and going wild, pouring sugary cereal all over themselves, <laughs> pouring in the chocolate. Like if that was happening, <laughs> that would just be fine with me. Because, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would actually be sound, a party. sounds really fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, like we're all going to limit 
our kids' environments in some way, whether it's, you know, you know, absurd examples like not inviting hard drugs into the house for our five-year-olds or whatever. Everyone's going to limit their environment in some capacity. And if you're limiting your environment, you should have a good reason. I try to have good reasons and I'm just okay with other people having them too. And so in the case that our yeah, let's emailer go, let's reached go back out to that, it's not a, an exact example, like the visit we had to your friend's house, but I think it's pretty much on course. So she's talking about a specific instance where they were visiting their mother-in-law. So they were in the shared space the sister didn't want her kids to be watching videos and she was okay with her kids doing it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, I don't know if it was specifically using the TV. Uh, in that case, I would just talk to the owner of the TV and like, see if it was okay. If my kids used it, if that person made a decision that it wasn't okay for my kids to use their TV, then I just tell my kids it's not our property. It doesn't want you to use yeah. the TV right now. Sorry. Um, and you know, I, that might weigh into my decision making in the future. If there wasn't like, a lot of good options for my kids to do there. Or, right. If there weren't other things on yeah. offer. Yeah. And there are, my kids just like simply weren't enjoying themselves. I also might do something else like have, bring a device I was gonna say, to watch or them. bring, right. <laughs> just bring more fun things for the kids to yeah, do. That's true. But I, yeah, I think in this situation, right. Like if it was somebody else's property, the TV, for example, that my kids wanted to watch, we would need their permission to use it. If my kids had brought their own devices, I would totally let them go watch their devices. I mean, that's not something I always would have said, but I think, and then it's kind of, it's just kind of the other parent's choice as to whether or not they let their kids go with them or not. Yeah. And if the, that person wants to have a conversation with me about it, which I don't think is like, especially likely, but I think some families are a little bit more argumentative or people argue about this stuff more than, than we do in our family for whatever reason. If someone were to have an argument with me about it, I would just say, I'm sorry that our choice makes you uncomfortable. I really am like, yeah. And I also know though, that just because that person is willing to put me in an uncomfortable position to ask me to parent in a way that I don't want to parent, I can't change my parenting based on that and feel like I'm respecting my kids. Like, exactly. Just because That's that person is willing to be more forceful and more, you know, pressure me more than my own kids will doesn't mean that that person should get their way. And that's not really a message I want to send my kids. And it's not really a precedent I want to establish in my relationships with others, because I feel like if I do that, I'm just inviting other pressure in the future, you know, whereas on the flip side, if I can just make a stand, I can put the ball back in their court. They can decide, okay, I'm really uncomfortable with James's parenting decisions. What do I want to do about it? And actually for me, and this is hypothetical, I feel as though I'm willing, like if there's anyone in my life who feels so passionately about me parenting in a different way that they want to spend less time with me, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people might not be, but again, I don't want to sacrifice my relationship with my own kids or my own principles or the way things I believe are right just because someone's trying to bully me into changing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think again, like circling back to what we were talking about before, this person is talking about family members. If these family members are people who it feels really important to her to continue having a strong relationship with, then yeah, maybe she does want to bring like some additional really fun games and toys to the house for her kids to play with or yeah. things that everyone can do together. However, again, keeping in mind, like we can't control every situation and some, sometimes our kids are just going to want to do something that the other parent might be uncomfortable with. And again, like as long as they're not hurting anybody or using anybody else's property when they're not allowed, it's something that I'm just okay with. Yeah. And you're, and I think your idea of bringing fun things for everyone to do is extremely considerate. And that's kind of like going above and beyond in a relationship with someone, in my opinion, I think if that person has a great deal of discomfort, we can also invite them to, to offer some, things. to offer some other options. And cause I think there's this other thing and this comes out in the adult child relationship or kind of adult perspective on children, which is like that 100% of the burden should be on the children to first of all, come up with everything that they want to do. And second of all, have it be within the acceptable guidelines of good aesthetics of what kids right. should so do. Like, oh, kids together. go play so we can all talk, but don't do this and don't play this and don't play yeah, this. Go play, literally go play imaginary games outside or a sport, but not too rough. And go do that and don't be in the house making too much noise right. in the house. Don't be playing video games. Don't be watching TV. Like there's all these don'ts. And I just feel like the people that are feeling all the don'ts should be the ones that should be offering the dues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I really, I just don't feel like that's too much to ask. I know that's unusual 
And I've landed at that place in my life. And it's just made my relationships with basically everyone I interact with so much better because I don't feel a lot of pressure to entertain anyone like some sort of circus clown or camp counselor. <laughs> and I feel like they don't either. And they can actually just let go. Cause I actually think a lot of people too are kind of doing this parenting dance where they also feel uncomfortable be, or self-conscious right, around right. you. And I've seen people who have had more restrictions than me loosen up and become visibly more relaxed mm. when we all hang out. Yeah. And, and loosen up makes it sound like our ways like objectively better. But I feel like deep down, if they didn't like what was happening, they wouldn't move in that direction. <laughs> so yeah. I feel as though it's been a win for everyone involved. This is a little bit, this is like, you just made me think of something. Yeah. It's shifting gears a little bit, but it, it follows. And it might be actually a nice transition to the other thing we wanted to talk about. So I'm thinking about a time that we had some people over for dinner here who we were um, kind of getting to know and they had a child and our kids were, you know, here and we had made dinner. And I think again, like what you were just talking about, James, like the common conversation around like when, when a bunch of families get together, it's kind of on the kids to go figure out what to do, but to kind of like leave the grown ups alone and let the grown ups talk. Yeah. Um, and I, first of all, I want to say like, I get it. Like, it's really nice to have grown up conversation, right? Like, mm -hmm. especially if you're taking care of kids all day or you're doing this parenting thing day in and day out, like it would be nice to just be able to sit and have conversation. Um, so I don't blame anybody for feeling that desire. Um, at the same time, I think there's something to be said for kind of reevaluating our expectations around that and being able to hold space for having that desire, but also being able to hold space for like that just might not happen for me every time I want it to happen. And it's been a long time for me to get there. And sometimes I still don't get there. So like this time we'd had dinner and, you know, everybody had kind of eaten. The kids had gotten up one by one to do their thing. Cause I, as you can probably guess, we don't care if our kids get up in the middle of dinner and go do something else. No. Um, but the, the family that was here had a child and the child really wanted their parents' attention. Like this child really wanted to sit on the parents' lap and talk to the parents and have the parents come play with them. And they probably hadn't seen them all day. They'd been at work and stuff like that. And I could tell like the parents were feeling a little bit, almost like they wanted to be apologetic about this yeah. and kind of uncomfortable and trying to like um, convince their child to like, go do their own thing. I was trying to create a space to like, help them relax about that and just be like, it's just okay. Like, it's not bothering us at all. We're totally happy to have this child here at the table talking about kid things or, you know, jumping up and down, whatever. It's just fine. Our toddler was actually still at the table with me and he brought over a book and wanted to read a book. And I mean, I'm not always in that mood, but I was like, okay, I'll read you the book, you know? And, and then it, it like created a good opportunity because then this other kid who was not my child came over and like enjoyed the book with us too. And it felt like a chance to just like, kind of like follow the kid's lead in that situation and also help the other adults just kind of be like, Oh, it's okay. Like, I don't right. need to like try to make my kid not annoy everybody else or something like that. Um, and, yeah. and it was actually just turned out to be like an enjoyable moment for everybody. Um, I wouldn't always be able to go to that place. Um, sometimes I might say like, well, I, I'm actually having a conversation and I'm not going to read a book right now. But at that point I wasn't personally involved in a conversation and I just felt like it would, it was an easy thing to do. But I think sometimes just being able to also, like you said, like help people, especially when they're in our space, help people get to a point of like, it's just okay. The kids can be kids and we can all be together and it's Okay. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the main things we can do to make people want to spend more time with us is to help them feel like they don't need to be embarrassed that their kids are acting like kids in our home. Mm -hmm. They don't need to worry about us judging their parenting decisions. Right. You know? And that, you know, you, you can bring in parents from all different types of styles. And if you're just like fine with it, as long as people, again, aren't hurting each other, yeah. damaging your property, like I think you can obviously have some sort of boundaries there, but yeah, creating that comfortable space. Cause I think a lot of parents, it's a feeling I've seen expressed so many times in so many ways, this feeling of like embarrassment around how their kids act or behave or their interests or whatever, mm -hmm. or this like feeling of anxiety or intense pressure to have their kids perform when everyone's together. Oh yeah. Um, I still feel it for sure. Oh, I, know, at times. And I felt it too. That's yeah. I'm speaking on behalf of myself as well. And I think, creating spaces where people don't have to feel that way, even if they parent differently than you do, I think actually will relieve them in some way. Yeah. Um, okay. So the last part of this question, and I think this will probably wind up being the last part of the episode because we're already up to 35 minutes. Why We've done do it we again. always do this? I know. 
is this question around when other people have much stricter punishment schedules than you do in your yeah, family. Yeah, more punitive parenting. Yeah, because you know we don't really do punishments for the sake of punishments in our family. Like we don't say if you do this, then this bad thing will happen to you to try to discourage you from doing it again. I, you know, you can go back and listen to our episode on the difference between natural consequences and punishments. And I, that can give you some insight into how we handle quote unquote discipline a little bit more, but the, the broad strokes of it are mostly we're just trying to keep everyone safe and keep everyone make, being somewhat kind to one another. Mm-hmm. And after that, like, yeah, we're not trying to send home any messages. We're not trying to, you know, deter certain behaviors or bribe to get other behaviors. And a lot of parents don't take that exact approach. Right. So I'm trying to think if we have a specific example of this in our life. I actually, I do have one, but do, can you think of any time where we've been a situation, specific example? Like where somebody was punishing their kid or being more punitive with them? Not right. Not right. The second. So the, the one example I can think of was when our kids learned about what being grounded was from a show they watched at a friend's house. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so this is the best I could do. Well, actually there was another example too, that I can jump into. Look but, at you. Uh, this one, well, another time our kid was expressing that someone that wasn't like a close friend of our family. Basically his friend told him about a different friend whose parent was using corporal punishment, basically getting physical with the kid Mm. in order to discipline them. And this is not uncommon. It's called spanking in some circles and call it whatever you want. And our kid was pretty concerned about this and like wondering if that was the right thing to do. Now this is different than if this were to happen in person Mm. and that would be a much more, you know, I've actually resolved myself at this point in my life to say something if I'm in a situation and I'm sure you'll be excited if this happens when we're both in the same space. <laughs> you're, you're, I wish you could see my face. You're frowning a little bit, nodding like, oh yeah, that sounds really awesome. But I think I would try to handle it the same in person or in this hypothetical time when my kid brought it up or it wasn't hypothetical that he brought it up. He brought up a time that we didn't physically witness together. And that's to say, first of all, if my kid asked a question about a parenting decision, if it's going to be one that's like too uncomfortable for them to ask the parent themselves, like in this case, why did you spank your child would probably be a pretty uncomfortable question to ask. Yeah. So maybe I wouldn't encourage them to do that, but I think I would try to put myself in the shoes of that parent and try to figure out what they were trying to accomplish. Totally. Um, if my kid was like, why does Elsie have to go to her room for time out? I'd say, well, I think their parents didn't like the way Elsie was acting. She was pulling her hair or whatever. And they think that by sending Elsie to her room, that that will show her that bad things will happen to her if she hurts other people. Mm -hmm. And our kid can say, oh, okay. Or they can ask more questions or whatever. Now, again, this might be pretty uncomfortable for (laughs) if the other parents are within earshot. Yeah. Um, If they do express discomfort, I could invite them to weigh in, I suppose. I could also say, like, if they're right there, I could say, is that about right to them? You know, because I do think that's a fair summary. I would definitely not do that. You, you might. would not. No, I, I, I would, would probably suggest to my kids that we talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like, <laughs> but see, I don't think it's, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just right. know myself and I know that I don't think I could say that in front of somebody else. I think I would more find a way to make it clear that we would talk about it later. And then I would probably say something similar. Like, I think her parents thought, you know, didn't like that behavior understandably, right? They didn't want her doing that to you. And so they thought this would be the best way to stop her. And then, yeah, I would probably ideally leave some space for them to continue the conversation and ask questions and come up to their own, come to their own conclusions about it. And if they came to conclusions that were like, well, we don't do that. Why don't we do that? And had those questions, I might talk a little bit about how some people are parented in a certain way. And then when they become parents, that's what they've learned. And they parent that way too. And they believe it's the best choice that they can make. And I might talk a little bit about how we just kind of stumbled upon some different ideas and decided to try them. You know, it'd be, it could be a long or a short conversation. It would really depend on how much more my kids wanted. Yeah. So I think a lot of what you said at the end there is really good for that follow-up after the fact conversation. I, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I would not say something like in the moment, at someone's house, I wouldn't say it's probably that's because that's how Elsie's mom was oh, raised. Oh, of course you, know? you wouldn't. No, <laughs> but, but, but I, I don't even think I could say the first thing. No, but I, but I think the first thing, I, I guess my position is that if you elect to interact with your kid in some way and I'm there, that's just public at that point. Like, what am I supposed to do? Pretend like it didn't happen? I guess that's what polite society tells you to do. But if my kid asked me about something that we all just witnessed with our own sure, two eyes I get it. and that invites me to help make sense of it, 
I'm going to help make sense of it. And again, none of my best friends are spanking their kids. Right. So like, that's just not something I ever see on any, I, I don't think I've ever even seen a child spanked. I can remember the last time it was at the beach before we had kids or when Ollie was like one or something like that. I can remember where we were in this restaurant. It's traumatizing. And if that were to happen in person, I would assume we're at, you know, maybe we're at some friend of a friend's birthday party or who knows where I would be. <laughs> and this were to happen. I'm not like so worried about offending that person by simply describing the, the, the thing that just happened in front of all of our eyes, but I wouldn't psychologize and, of course and go not. deep into that. Uh, when we were there, I also, you know, it's funny cause I can think on the flip side just the other day, uh, our kids and a few other neighborhood kids were playing on the trampoline. And one of our kids was not listening when another person was asking them to not physically be in their space anymore. I know you all thought our kids were perfect, no, but they're not. <laughs> climbing on the back, you know, and our kid is quite a bit littler than this other kid, but he was expressing extreme discomfort. And I pointed it out and I said, Hey, he seems really uncomfortable with that. Have you noticed that he seems really uncomfortable here? And you know, cause I was, I was talking to one of the other parents that was just kind of in the neighborhood and our kid was ignoring it. And I said, I'm starting to feel concerned for his bodily autonomy. I'm, I'm concerned for everyone's well being here because you're not respecting his body and our kid kept doing it. And so I went on to that trampoline and took him off the trampoline. And that might not sound like quote unquote peaceful parenting to everybody out there. I'm not sure. And that was a parent and he was very upset about it and did not want me to do that. And in that moment, I just felt like I was witnessing someone grabbing and climbing on someone's body. And I invited them multiple times to stop. And at that point it was incumbent upon me to help preserve that other child's bodily autonomy. So I did it. And that dad actually did ask me about that later. And I owned my parenting decision. It was uncomfortable. I didn't really want to be talking about it. Mm. I thought it was awkward that he asked me about it. <laughs> but if someone else asked him in the moment, Hey, why is he pulling that kid off the trampoline? And I don't say his name because I don't want to embarrass him. If you ever listen to these in the future, I would say, cause I just, he wasn't respecting this other guy's body. So mm -hmm. that's just the decision, you know? Yeah. And I don't know. I, I just think that if we're going to live in a society where people are being disciplined, it's just okay to talk about it. And I also, I, you know, in this case, it's a sister. And I know that people have much more loaded feelings yeah. about family relationships, which I totally understand. And I hope to never be put in similar positions by my own family in the future. And I think just talking is okay. And being honest is okay. And if other people feel upset by honesty, then it's okay to allow them to be upset. You know. Yeah, I think so too. And I think in kind of answering our kids' questions and kind of giving them space to think through how that sort of, you know, pu those sort of like punitive measures that are taken with kids, giving them space to like decide how that makes them feel is, is okay and is yeah. good. And honestly, like when you're growing up being parented the way that many of our kids are being parented, like your kids are going to pretty quickly come to their own decisions about how that feels to them. And you can be a sounding board for them to kind of just, you know, talk it through and think about it. And ultimately our kids are going to encounter so many different, um, lifestyles and choices and people right. and cultures and all of these different things in the world. So it doesn't mean that we have to choose to spend all of our waking hours with people who are making drastically different choices than us if it doesn't feel good. But we also don't have to be scared. I don't think of encountering them and, kind of like, again, being support for our kids as they like work through what that experience is like for them when they encounter those sort of differences. That's just a part of life. Yeah. And I think those differences and helping our kids work through them can be part of the uncomfortable part of parenting, but I think it's okay. You know, I mean, yeah, exactly. back to that screens example too, like, I think it's okay to let your child know, like in the case that when we were visiting your friend, I think it's okay to say like, uh, just so you know, like, this other kid hasn't expressed an interest in playing with you and, you know, is feeling like he would like to play, but you're using your iPad right now and he feels like he can't approach you and talk to you, you know, mm -hmm. and that yeah, case, definitely kid raising your kid's say, awareness about hey, that. I remember is I invited good. you to play this board game or they could say they could then do the math in their head. Like so many adults do all the time. Like, is it worth it to me to try to pursue this relationship and not do the thing that I feel like doing in this moment? Or isn't it? And, you know, but helping them, because I think sometimes our kids are just totally oblivious to 
that, yeah, so we can give them some context. Yeah, and, and you don't then, want to shame or pressure or... But I like the way you just phrase it. You're just yeah. kind of pointing it out. You're helping them notice something that they may not have noticed. And yeah. then you're still, this is like the big part, you're still giving them the space to make the choice for themselves, exactly. right? Like you're raising their awareness of like, oh, this person is maybe wanting to spend some time with you and they're having trouble getting your attention. And then you like still give your kid the space to make a choice there. Even if they end up making the choice that makes you cringe, you know? I mean, of course, again, they're not hurting somebody, um, or, you know, being incredibly, you know, overtly rude or unkind on their walls or something. Right. But they're just kind of making a choice. Even if it's not the choice you would make sometimes, you know, those are the hard parts of parenting this way. We support our kids anyway, even if it feels awkward and uncomfortable. That's it. And I think actually it brings the whole family closer together in some ways too. when, you can stand up for your parenting decisions. And I think it sends a signal of security to your own kids when like, and it doesn't give them the bad association. Like when we go out, my parents turn to these totally other piece, different right? people. Yeah. That, like like change make them never the want to go anywhere and, else with you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think we've done it. Uh, we've done it. As we like to say, I feel like you've been saying that a lot lately. We should wrap it up. Now you made me feel self-conscious about the the way I'm trying to wrap it up. That's your new sign-off. We've done it. Mm, There's nothing more to do. We've done it. All of it. Are you ready now? I'm ready. Go for it. It's your turn. Oh, yeah. Me. Um, (laughs) Way to ruin the whole (laughs) sign-off. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Uh And just remember that every moment is a new moment to be the parent you hope to be. I love you guys. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to One Free Family. If you enjoy the podcast, please show your support by becoming a patron at onefreefamily.com slash support. Your support will help make this show better. Plus, you can get access to rewards and additional episodes by joining. Again, that's onefreefamily.com slash support. This has been a Pax Libertas Productions podcast.